Hey, welcome everybody. Lovely to see faces here on the screen and to know that there's others practicing with us um, later on. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> so I finally had the opportunity to watch a movie that's been on my watch list uh, for a while. And um, someone, thankfully, thank you, Supriya, reminded me of it. Um, and and I found that it's available on streaming, but you have to you have to pay like, I don't know, four dollars or something to to download it. I think it was on I think it's on Apple and Amazon and whatever. Uh, you just Google how to watch it if you want to watch it. So maybe you've already seen it. It's called Perfect Days. Anybody seen Perfect Days? Maybe with um, it's a the director was Wim Wenders, and it's set in Japan, and it's a Japanese movie with English subtitles. Not a lot of subtitles because it's very minimal talking, very minimal dialogue in it. It's uh, beautiful, and I think it won a ton of awards. I should have looked that up. Um, so Perfect Days, um, you can Google how to watch it if you haven't. And oh, there's so much Dharma in it. It's set in Tokyo, Japan, and it's at least two hours long and it's like a a slow movie in a beautiful way but you know hmm, I find so many modern movies this is also a modern movie so many uh mainstream movies uh you know things are just getting faster and more uh in your face and more uh, intensity and certainly more violence and so it's such a reprieve for the heart body mind to just mm, watch something slow and evocative and it almost feels like real time of course it isn't but uh, yeah sweet so it follows a character named Hirayama uh, it's played by an amazing actor, Koji Yakushuko. I think it's a K. Yakushuko. Ko. It could be an H. Um, my writing. Is that a K or an H? Yakushuko. Oh. Anyways, he's a wonderful actor. And this is a story about his daily life. It's really a character study, but also a lot of dharma. And he's a a public toilet cleaner, public bathroom cleaner, is his work. It's so good. <laughs> and he really has this, um, what feels to me like a monastic lifestyle. And, and a monastic, like... When you go on a meditation retreat, you also, to some degree, to some degree, definitely, uh, take up some of these practices of renunciation and simplifying. I love <laughs> the rooms at, at retreat centers. Oh, I love them. Just this little, sometimes you have a sink, a bed, chair. In a closet and it's got no, no other you know whatever you bring hopefully minimal uh they're just so clear and calming and uh just what's needed so he he has this uh minimalistic lifestyle of renunciation which is this film alludes to is something he's definitely chosen um yes he has and and uh 
I'm laughing at myself, talking to myself. Um, and and he also has this kind of monastic commitment to the simple routines of everyday life. Very, uh, yeah, simple and uh, systematic almost, routine, everyday, very repetitive life, which is uh, a lot of what um, monastic life is like. Um, and it cultivates this kind of, it can cultivate this um these qualities of calm and spaciousness, perspective, which then allows one to notice sweetness, allows, us, allows one to cultivate a lot of presence because of the simplicity and the, the, hmm, the routineness, the everyday routines, uh, there's more space in a way to notice what stands out on that canvas, you know, on that on that background. Um, this film was originally titled uh, Como Rebe, Como Rebe. No, I haven't heard it pronounced, so apologies. Uh, K O M O R E B I, Como Rebe. I'm not sure how they would say an E, Rebe. And this means the dancing shadow patterns created by sunlight shining through the rustling leaves of trees. The dancing shadows patterns created by sunlight shining through the rustling leaves of trees and every day rain or shine all kinds of weather the first thing he does when he wakes up often is a little smile and then he looks out the window at the trees and then does his very simple morning routine which is just beautiful um, and then he opens the door really into an alleyway, but he steps out and looks up at the trees. Uh, and through the day, many times he's looking at the trees. Uh, yeah, and, and there's this ephemeral nature to the light dancing through the trees. It, it's to me, very evocative of impermanence and um, the ever-changing nature of all things. And so many things seem so solid and permanent, especially me, me and mine, and that kind of a solidification around self and others it can happen. And, and this kind of dancing light, like right now, there's very little wind here. I'm looking out a window and the the leaves are still just rustling and shifting slightly amongst each other, but the light is always changing. Leaves are always changing. Everything is always changing, even if it's in stillness, uh, supposed stillness. It's a beautiful image that reminds us of one of the main characteristics, uh, a liberating characteristics that the Buddha taught uh, that is the nature of all things. All things are ephemeral, impermanent. And all things are interconnected and um, affected by infinite variables. Nothing is permanent and separate. And because of these characteristics, all things are uh, not to be clung to because there's nothing to cling to. It's all changing and uh, an unreliable source of true happiness. And uh, so, in this character, this character portrayal in in his life, 
routine is a is a good thing. It's portrayed as a, a beautiful and sweet life. And uh, the director says this about, about this character that he wrote. Um, it gives him, that he co-wrote, that uh, this routine, he says, it gives him structure. And that structure makes him a very free person. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> How do we feel about our routines and our structures? Some folks feel imprisoned by them or bored by them or not awake to things that are routine. We just kind of get a little numbed out. And wow, it, that's really, I think, evocative that structure makes him a very free person. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, it can be that we've been taught or have this idea that that hmm, routine is something we want to get out of. We can see it as being in a rut, you know, or something that we're numbed, numb to, like we just get up and put the kettle on or stumble here and there and you know we're like what are our habits of routine and and can we awaken to each movement as a how it truly is a work of art a piece of beauty of impermanence of something to awaken to and uh, the, the simplicity of his life as well and of this whole story is, of course, very, as I mentioned, reminiscent of a monastic life. But also renunciation is taught about so often in the suttas, in the dharma and how important it is on the path to freedom, to liberation, to freeing the heart-mind, that uh, renunciation, what do we really need? Uh, what can we let go of? I was been doing some decluttering lately, and you know, you likely heard of like the Marie Kondo uh, practice of, you know, uh, asking if, you know, does it bring me joy? Yes or no. And uh, there's another way to practice renunciation is, um, can I live without it? Ooh, that's good. That's so different. Can I live without it? Probably. <laughs> For a lot more stuff than like, does it bring me joy? Well, yes, sometimes. And it reminds me of, you know, and we can still cling to so much. And uh, can I live without it? It's like so, so easy to let stuff go and you practice with that. Um, yeah. Uh And it's interesting in the story to see how much, I mean, a lot of it is um, from reading interviews with the director and co-writer, but uh, because not much is said in the film, uh, in dialogue, but it, it, how his life seems to have such meaning and purpose as a as a toilet public toilet cleaner uh and there's a contentment and an equanimity of course there's still some dramas that happen definitely but there's this uh presence and equanimity 
he has with it with with all of this which again is a, a very important part of practice and path equanimity um And it also reminds me of being on retreat and we, depending on the retreat center, we often do a what's called a yogi job where we help with the costs and, and but it's also part of a meditation practice to do mm, toilet cleaning or food prep or mopping or whatever, all these different types of jobs in the retreat center. And monastic life is very much like that. It's less often about like long periods of meditation as it is keeping the center running and a lot of um, a lot of that, especially depending on the lineage. Um, so, yeah, yogi jobs of where where you may have the opportunity to clean the washroom or the toilets and the washrooms and the showers, sinks, floors for the rest of the retreatants and yourself. And uh, it's a, a whole evocative practice. So next time you're on retreat, um, choose, choose toilets. <laughs> and you will be wiser, I'm sure. I'm trying to not give away too much about the movie, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, the way he wakes up each morning reminded me of a, a gatha or like a, a, a phrase, a daily, I don't know, what's another word for gatha? Uh, um, yeah, a saying that uh, that I use. I, I have it printed out and have on, uh, on my nightstand and I have like a p.m. and a.m. evening and morning saying reading, uh, which is mostly memorized. But uh, the morning one is like this, and it's very much how this character seems to be awakening. Waking this morning, I smile. A brand new day is before me. I aspire to live each moment mindfully and to look upon all beings with the eyes of kindness and compassion. May I and all beings be happy and free from suffering. So you might consider making something like this for yourself where it really becomes, and then maybe I should share the evening one just because I mentioned it. The, the day is now ended. My life is shorter. Let me look carefully. What have I done? With all my heart, let me be diligent, engaging in the practice. Let me live deeply, free from my afflictions, aware of impermanence, so that life does not drift away without meaning. So see if, it, if that resonates for you to find your own words. I, I'll certainly share these. Um, if you want to adapt them uh, and, or use them. and But to start and end each day with some aspect of mm, ritual or uh, routine. And see if it supports your intentions. How could it not? <laughs> Um, and it, it, the film also just really touched me like I just am spending a lot more time looking up and looking at the trees and, and the hearing the sounds of the trees and the light and also mm, affecting the way I just move through routines in the house or through my day and what's being done not mindfully, just, uh, you know, out of habit while the mind's ruminating on, on the mosquitoes that we talked about from last week. Uh, and so could you 
would it be helpful to you to uh, ritualize or awaken to these routines in a in a very in a way to see what dharma is there what insights are there for us the way he brushes his teeth even the way he picks up his keys the way he waters the plants yeah um and the other thing I was noticing is uh, he, he has a long commute to his work and he's never like weaving in and out of traffic or speeding. He always looks quite calm. He's listening to this excellent soundtrack on, in the movie. And uh, yeah, he's the, just, it, it's helped to remind me to be peaceful when I'm driving just just driving yeah and it reminded me of this poem by Grace Butcher which I've put in the uh, chat here and I'll link it down below in the YouTube video it's called learning from trees I was reminded of it as I was uh, the trees are a huge theme in this movie and this is the such a good poem, Learning from Trees by Grace Butcher. If we could, like the trees, practice dying. Do it every year, just as something we do, like going on vacation or celebrating birthdays. It would become as easy a part of us as our hair or clothing. Someone would show us how to lie down and fade away as if in deepest meditation. And we would learn about the fine, dark emptiness, both knowing it and not knowing it. And coming back would be irrelevant. Whatever it is the trees know when they stand undone, surprisingly intricate, in, intricate. We need to know also so we can allow that last thing to happen to us as if we were only an ordinary thing. Leaves and lives falling away. The spirit complex waiting in the fine darkness to learn which way it will go. Yeah, that one, um, take some time to read it again for yourself or print it. There's a lot in that, that one. It's a good one. All right. Uh, one sec. Hmm. I think that's all the mercy. <clears throat> yes, it is. Okay, so let's practice. We'll have a last week with like 20 minutes tonight, 25 minutes. We'll have a full practice and uh, see what comes. All right, so uh, adjusting anything you need in your space to feel supported, wakeful, and at ease. Setting aside distractions as Koji, the character in this, no, that's the actor, Hirayama is the character, um, setting aside distractions as much as possible. And see if you need any other adjustments or movements or looking around your space, 
so that when you come into stillness and when the eyes come to rest, there's a feeling, a sense of welcomeness as you rest into this moment of presence. Feel awake awareness, rest back and down. So that any leaning forward into the next moment could rest back and down. Any unnecessary tension could slide down, tension in the face or head, down the sides and back of the neck and across the shoulders, rest. Down into relaxed hands. Check out what's happening in the inner layers of the belly. Is there holding or tension or contraction that's um, in a habit state there? And could some kindness or softness come to that and invite a little bit or some degree of release. Feeling back of the skull, down through the spine and across the hips. Feeling weightedness, connectedness, presence, rootedness through legs and feet. Bringing the teachings of the trees into our posture Grounded, upright, and open. And you might find it supportive of your practice to take some moments to reflect on or recall your values, ethics, or precepts. What guides you? What inspires you? How do you want to be in relationship with yourself, each other, and the world?
And feel how your values, ethics, precepts create an uprightness within you. And a sense of protection, protecting yourself and others from unnecessary harm. And then when you feel ready, choose an anchor for your practice. So this may be the breath. It could also be sounds if you're in an environment where there's some sounds coming and going that are noticeable. Or it may be sensations in the body or a particular area of the body. Any of these anchors is uh, has the same qualities of interconnectedness, impermanence. So choose what feels most accessible and supportive for your practice tonight. Sounds, sensations, or breath. And then even if through this practice, uh, the idea might arise, oh, maybe a different anchor would be better now. See if you can just return to the one you've chosen now and just we'll continue working with that one for now. And see the quality of routineness in this anchor. This is something that's always happening in this alive body. And it's always changing. But it's often in the background and perhaps not attended to sound, sensation, or breath. And we want to turn up the light of awareness on that anchor and really pay attention to it as if it's precious, as if it's seen in its true nature, leading, ephemeral, each moment absolutely unique, even in what seems like it's familiarity or sameness. Really pay attention now. Maybe a tendency to kind of numb out to what seems routine. And then we just begin again. Turn up the curiosity. As he says in the movie, next is next, now is now.
like the light moving through the leaves of trees that often goes unnoticed? Could we awaken to this dancing shadow patterns? The sensations in the body or the experience of sound coming and going or breath. And for these next few minutes of silence together, we might find inspiration from this part of the poem. Someone would show us how to lie down and fade away as if in deepest meditation. And we would learn about the fine dark emptiness both knowing it and not knowing it, and coming back would be irrelevant. Gently noticing if you've spaced out or wandered away and begin again with your anchor. As if it's the last time that you'll hear that sound, feel that sensation, or experience that breath, because it is.
Let the self fade away and awaken to just this. And for these last few minutes of the practice, we'll open to <clears throat> metta meditation, the cultivation of loving kindness. Waking this morning, I smile. A brand new day is before me. I aspire to live each moment mindfully and to look upon all beings with the eyes of kindness and compassion. May I and all beings be happy and free from suffering. May I and all beings be happy and free from suffering. As you repeat these words or your own words silently, feel them emerging from your heart center. May I and all beings be happy and free from suffering. including ourselves, our dear ones, the unfriendly or difficult ones, the majority of beings that are neutral or unnoticed by us, unknown, and all beings everywhere, including ourselves. May we be happy and free from suffering.
May I and all beings be happy and free from suffering. So perhaps some um, reflecting of yeah does it does that resonate for you in that could the structure of your life of your days that seem imposed or mundane or routine could they make you a very free person <laughs> mm Good practice for this week. Mm. Okay, thank you for joining us. If you're uh, practicing with us on the YouTube channel, check the links below and uh, may you be free.